What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, and having a great day so far. And of course, I hope everyone is testing negative for the viruses. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Virus Update for Friday, August 15th, 2025. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. Let's face it, there's a lot of different viruses out there, and you need to be informed of what's going on with these viruses. That's what I do here on my channel each and every day. I provide you the latest news, data, and anything I can find to help keep you informed and safe of what's going on with these viruses. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. And of course, leave your comments down below. Already, we do have a lot of news stories today, but we will probably not be getting to the CDC update today because uh, I'm recording early. The CDC update's not in yet. I got an appointment this afternoon that popped up out of nowhere issue I have to resolve. So uh, we'll get to the CDC updates over the weekends, which means this weekend is going to be very busy for the virus update, probably both videos. We will have a ton of things to get through this weekend. We got a ton of things today without the CDC. Starting off with this, Louisiana faces August COVID surge as Nimbus and Stratus variants drive record wastewater levels. Yeah, things are going really bad in Louisiana and New Orleans has just been nonstop. I mean, New Orleans got hit hard in the winter this past year. I mean, they were one of the harder hit places. Mind you, they had the Super Bowl. They also had uh, Mardi Gras. And then the winter in general, that led to problems. And now this summer, they are just getting hit again and again. And wastewater levels are uh, very high there. In fact, at or near record high levels in Louisiana, which, uh, yeah, that is not good. So again, uh, a lot of reasons there for problems. And also, I think we need some case studies done or maybe some sort of studies done on what's going on in Louisiana. Because remember, I just said Louisiana got hit very hard in the wintertime. Usually if an area gets hit, that spares them a little bit better off from future waves. Like, for example, Washington and the West Coast got hit very hard last summer, which meant they had a relatively easy go of it with COVID during the wintertime. But here we are in New Orleans. They had a rough winter and Yet, summer is proving to be just as bad, if not worse. So, yeah, we need to figure out why that is the case. And it often shows that immunity uh, may not always be generated by an infection. I know it was really hyped up about. The news was on it. A lot of experts really were trying to sell the idea that, oh, we have high levels of, well, that may not be the case down there. We need to figure out what's going on. I mean, there's a lot of travelers that go down there. Could that be part of the reason? They traveled there and now they're not there. And a lot of people did not catch it. Who knows? We don't know what the case is. Moving on now to this from Sci-Fi. Uh, some of the po COVID positivity rates in the United States continue to be a problem. Breaking. CDC reports the U.S. and seven regions at the highest COVID-19 positivity since September or October of 2024. All regions except the Pacific Northwest increased. Region 7 and Region 5 have the largest one week spikes since July and August of uh, 2024, as of August 9th. So yes, the COVID positivity rates continue to be a problem here. But uh, a note about last week, the prior week was revised down and the spike is now the highest in over a year, but not higher than 2024. All right, moving on to this and I don't know, you may even see something in the title of today's video about this. I don't know what the title is going to be just yet. COVID-19 increases the risk of asthma and sinusitis while vaccination offers protection. Uh, this is something that actually hits me personally because I deal with asthma and my asthma diagnosis came after my first infection of COVID. It wasn't until, uh, what was it, maybe two years later, well, a year, we'll say a year and a half later, but yeah, it's something I deal with. I deal with the moderate asthma. Uh, for those who are longtime followers of the channel, they know that, well, I was getting injections for it. Those injections, injections have been paused. It's Zolaire. It's a asthma treatment. No, it's not the COVID vaccine. Someone's getting ready to say, oh, stop getting injected. That's your problem. No, this is a asthma injection. It's Zolaire. Right now, it's put on hold because, well, there's issues with insurance. It's a very expensive 
drug to get if you go to get it at an infusion center. Sounds like I'm going to have to do self-injection, which may be cheaper. I don't know. It's a long story, but the point is we are finding now that uh, there is a big increase in the number of people who go on to develop asthma post-COVID, or the risk of it is high. People who had COVID-19 had a 66% higher risk of developing asthma. Again, 66% higher. And sinus, situs, I hope I'm saying that correctly. If I'm saying it wrong, please correct me down below. I will not get angry whatsoever for that issue. 74% uh, higher. So there are a lot of people going on to develop breathing problems post-COVID. And we do know that uh, this is a major issue and vaccination does offer protection to it, but it's not perfect. And of course, when my issue started, uh, it was pre-vaccination. Now, we'll never 100% know if my issue goes back to COVID. It could have uh, been made worse from an issue I had when I was a kid. Long story short on this, I did have a, a pretty bad bout of uh, bronchitis as a kid. I was in Boy Scouts as a kid. We went on a trip and some dum-dum, we'll just say dum-dum, thought it would be a nice idea to, hey, we're going to have a campfire, right? Uh, let's bring pre-treated wood or something, and because I'm redoing something in my house, and oh, let's just burn it. Yeah, I was exposed to that. I don't know. That could have been the start of my issue, and then COVID could have just made it come alive. Who knows? We'll never know. But uh, yeah, COVID going on to cause asthma problems and uh, other problems. Yeah, the risk is real, which is why you want to take this virus serious. All right, moving on. Uh, some things now from Dennis, the COVID info guy. New South Wales Respiratory Surveillance Reports, week ending August 9th, 2025. The COVID positivity rate, 4%. That's down by 1%. Number of laboratories reporting COVID, just one out of four. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh, COVID uh, cases, 1,558. That's down by 20.6%. Influenza, 8,032. That's down by 2.1%. RSV, 1,483 cases. That's down by 8.8%. It looks like the NB.1.8.1 variant is at 75%. XFG is still at 12%. We will have to wait and see what happens when XFG takes over. Does it go up again, or does NB.1.8.1 just kind of uh, offer some protection towards that? We honestly don't know. And it looks like a two out of the four regions are rising for wastewater with covid in New South Wales, Australia. Now taking a look at South Australia, reported cases there. This is as of up to August 15th. COVID, 239, that's down by 6.2%. Flu, 1,279, that's up by 13.6%. RSV, 799 cases, that's up by 14.6%. Pertussis, 63 cases, that's up by 8.6%. And take a look at this. No new deaths reported, but in 2025, they have 40 COVID deaths, 7 flu, 5 RSV, none for pertussis. That's good news there. And Western Australia weekly update. The COVID positivity rate is 4.2% or up by 0.2%. PCR cases, 237. That's down by 20.2%. Hospitalizations decreased to an average of 90 per day or 2.1%. Uh, ICU, 7-day average, decreased to uh, three, that's down by 25%. So, uh, yeah, um, there's your update for portions of Australia. And, oh, we have one more thing. How about this? COVID-19 outbreaks in Australian residential aged care facilities. 14 are showing up at this time. Active cases, 676, up by 7.8%. Active outbreaks, 114, down by 4.2%. Resident cases, 483 that's up by 10.2%. Staff cases, 193. That's up by 2.1%. Reported deaths in 2025, 355. That is up by 5. And yeah, 7,559 age care COVID deaths since the start of the pandemic there. So yes, uh, that is not a good thing. Now moving on to New Zealand where we have South Canterbury School closed due to staff illnesses. Uh, it's winter time over there. We're keeping an eye on there in Australia because uh, that is an indicator of what could happen here in the winter time. And as you know, we'll be tracking this because we do have, for now, a U.S. 
tracking thread for that. I don't have an international one as of yet. Uh, we'll have to see if I need to start one up. I don't think I will be. It's just too much to keep track of the whole world. So for now, I think it's just going to be the United States that we track for that. And also, yeah, we're really doing this again. Idaho. Remember they had the first case of measles the other day? What does one plus one equal? It equals two, right? You know, what do they now have? They now have two cases of measles. What will two plus two equal? Four. Uh, let's hope we don't go that route. We've seen oh so many states do that, which is not a good thing at all. All right, that's your measles report for today. Uh, let's see, did the CDC update measles? No, they still haven't, so I don't know when this is going to update. Again, the viral activity levels for Canada. COVID-19 is moderate. Flu A is low. Flu B is low, and RSV is listed at low at this time. Let's take a look at some air qualities across the United States. Of course, if you developed asthma or something else post-COVID, you monitor the air qualities, and I'm monitoring them here, and you can see where I'm at in Southeast PA. Mm, some oranges showing up. Look back to the West, yeah, some more oranges, even a few reds, and there's a lot of places in the United States with yellow today. Pacific Northwest, wildfire smoke's an issue there. Uh, wildfire smoke in Southern California from some fires, also in Colorado. Yeah, there's a lot of fire issues this summer. This is a bad year for fire issues. Uh, it's just not good whatsoever. Uh, moving on now. Yeah, my breathing this morning, it was not good when I woke up this morning. I had a whole bunch of coughing problems. Luckily, that got better. And taking a look now at Pinellas County, Florida, speaking of breathing problems, I'm seeing that listed here. And yet again, uh, wow. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but at least five sick person calls. Y yeah, we're seeing sick person calls go up again in this area, which means COVID could be going up again in this area. Yeah, that is something we're going to have to really keep an eye on. Parts of Florida may once again be going up. Uh, Disney never stopped going up in Orlando. Uh, if you took a trip there to Disney this summer, which chances are most of my followers did not, but if you're a random person that clicked on one of my videos, let me know. Do you know someone who got COVID at Disney, whether it be now or at any point during the pandemic? In fact, I may make that be a poll question. It may not get a lot of votes, but I may make that a poll question on X. Do you know someone who contracted COVID during a visit to Disney since 2020? All right, Philadelphia, 822 EMS incidents reported. We still do not have an update from Philadelphia's COVID numbers. Taking a look at what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, here at 1026 in the morning, there are 13 EMS calls, and wow, cardiac emergency is showing up not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times. Ooh, that's not good whatsoever. We don't need to see that. That's from yesterday. You know, we saw things were getting busy in Cheshire County. Look at this. Respiratory difficulty. It's showing up three times right now in Cheshire County, Pennsylvania. That's not good. Also, a stroke showing up as well. Bucks County, we need to refresh this. I haven't looked at this at all today. I'm being honest. And look at that. There were 11 calls last time I looked at it. There's nine calls now. So, uh, yeah, Bucks County has been trending busier. This is still a relatively new dashboard. So, I don't know what the peak of COVID waves looks like. There, I don't know what winter's going to look like there because they literally just started this dashboard this summer. Taking a look at the hospital situation here in Pennsylvania, and there are a couple of hospitals with problems, but remember, it's early in the day. The peak of hospital issues uh, during a day is usually in the afternoon, from what I understand. And you can see there's just a couple of hospitals right now. Taking a look at what's going on in New Jersey, New Jersey does have a reduced staff issue at Central State Medical Center. Wonder if people are out sick? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Full and total. Someone's going to post down below. You can't just say everything's COVID. Blah, blah, blah. I don't say everything's COVID. We suspect that maybe it's part of the issue. We never say it is the full issue for most of the things we talk about here. And uh, specialty issue at Inspira Center, Mannington. All right. We have the New Jersey Respiratory Report. Have not done this in a while. Emergency department visits remain low for COVID-19, influenza, and RSV, though there have been increases in emergency department visits associated with COVID-19. Uh, so, yes, that is a, a problem. Why is this not letting us scroll to the right? There we go. In the recent weeks, and I have also noted an increase in the number of emergency departments that have been 
diagnoses. Though low, there continues to be increases in hospital admissions for COVID-19. The majority of hospitalizations have been reported in 65 years or older. There continues to be increases in test positivity for COVID-19 in New Jersey. Test positivity remains elevated for some of the other viruses. Levels of COVID-19 influenza type A, influenza B, and RSV are low in wastewater. XFG and NB.1.8.1 are the uh, dominating variants there. In Los Angeles, we see that wastewater does continue to go up at this time for COVID. All right, can't take a look at New York State because New York State's not in yet. We will get to that over the weekend. Walgreens, in case you didn't see this early in the week, the positivity rate there, it dropped ever so slightly, but overall this summer, Walgreens positivity rate has been continuing to go up. As you see here, Pacific Northwest Washington State had a significant increase this week to 11.3%, but again, there's not enough testing being done. However, on the national level, interest for testing went up because 3,149 people got tested versus 2,772. Take a look at this. A change today on wastewater scan. The West Coast is now listed high. The South is now listed high. Uh, the Midwest is listed high. And Northeast is listed at um, medium at this time. But when we take a look at the regional trends, you can see here, uh, the Northeast, yeah, there's a little issue going on there. But overall, things are continuing to go up. And let's take a look at the South and see what's going on in chart. Yeah, though that started to go down a little bit, uh, it's still in the high category. And what has happened in the Midwest? Yeah, the Midwest is rapidly going up. And taking a look at the West Coast, take a look at this. Wow, the West Coast is now starting to go straight upward. That's not good. We'll take a look at some more individual wastewater sites probably on the Sunday update. I think the Saturday update is going to be jam-packed, filled with CDC, other stuff, and whatever we find. Uh, but I do want to take a look. Let's see what's going on in Texas. Uh, we just got a new um, Patreon member from Texas today, so let's be extra friendly and show, oh, wow, this is northwest of Houston, Texas. Yikes. This is rapidly, I hope that corrects it and is wrong, because that is a massive, massive increase for COVID there. And we saw that the other wastewater site, too, is showing up high. What's going on with that? Now, that one's dropping a little bit. But, uh, yeah, Texas things are going in the wrong direction. Uh, Mondays is when Texas has been releasing their updates. And then we get it in the midweek update from CJS. Uh, take a look at this. COVID is listed at medium. And it is going up ever so slightly. Alrighty, folks. We'll have more states over the weekend. CDC update and everything else. I'm sure tomorrow we'll definitely go over 20 minutes. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below if you want to become a Patreon member or support the channel in any other way. There's ways to do that down below. And remember, please take this virus serious. Uh, your potential risk of going on to develop asthma with COVID is 66%. Yes, you'll be able to find this study over on my website. I'm going to literally post it right after I'm done recording this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Friday afternoon. Bye-bye.